Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Read the Bible with the Practical Patriot. We're back at the Bible today. I hope you enjoyed worshiping with me last week. Uh, today, I am going to read out of 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. Just those two chapters. It won't take too long, but I think that 1 Corinthians 12 and 13 are what the Lord wants me to read today. And I think it's partially because we need to do a better job at loving one another. And also, uh, my political philosophy is actually similar to 1 Corinthians 12, where everybody has a different role to play in government, depending on where you feel like the Lord has you placed, right? Some people are designed for local government. Some people are designed for state government. Some people are designed for national government. And I think that where you're called is where you should be. Because <clears throat> God gives us all different giftings. And that's what this is all about. So we are going to start reading in 1 Corinthians 12. And we're going to pray first, of course, as we always do. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you that it gives us life and that it teaches us. And we pray, Lord, that our hearts will be open to receiving what you have for us out of your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so today I'm reading out of the ESV. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities. Sorry, my dog is in here. <laughs> he wants to play fetch right now. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between Spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, all of these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one Spirit all were baptized into the body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one Spirit." For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, uh, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our, our, our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty. Which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it. That there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. 
Now you go lay down, cubby. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administering, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Do Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the higher gifts. And I will show you still a more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove the mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all that I have and deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love does not, and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. Sorry, I'm going to start that over. My dog keeps licking himself right next to the camera. <laughs> Gross. Let's try that again. <clears throat> love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. And when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. For I, now I know in part and then I shall know fully even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. And I'm gonna end there because I think that we need to just love better, body of Christ. For those of you who listen to my Bible readings, I'm going to assume, which I know I shouldn't assume, <laughs> but I'm going to assume that if you're reading my Bible, reading along with me in this word that you are a believer in Jesus. And what, is, what does Paul call us to do? Paul the apostle who wrote all the epistles. He calls us to love. And Jesus said that. What is the greatest commandment? To love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your mind and your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. If we have not love, we are nothing. So though I ask you that today. How are you doing on love? Hmm? I know I could do better at it sometimes. Are we, are we being patient and kind? Are we envying or boasting? Are we being arrogant or rude? Because we're supposed to be like Christ, right? Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He is the perfect one. He is the love of God. So it's that song, right? He is the love, unfailing love. He is the love of God, right? He is the love of God. And we are to be like him. Are we being arrogant or rude? Are we insisting on our own way? Are we being irritable or resentful? Love does not rejoice at wrongdoing. Are we rejoicing at wrongdoing? But love rejoices with the truth. I certainly hope that we're all rejoicing with the truth. Love bears all things. Do we, are, we, are we bearing all things well? I struggle with that. Love believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. That's a tough word. Love never fails. 
It does not fail. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought and reasoned like a child. And when I became a man or grown up, when I became a man, I get put away childish things. Are we putting away childish things? Are we, are we living as we should, as grown-ups in the Lord? Hallelujah. Isn't God's word good? Lord, I thank you for this word, and I thank you that it has spoken to my heart this morning. I pray, Lord, that we will meditate on these scriptures today and ask us how we're doing of ourselves. Are we loving? Are we being patient and kind? Show us where we're lacking, Lord, so that we can be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day. Be blessed and stay free. See you next time.